Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see y'all. My, my glasses make you glare, but I have to have them to read. So at any rate, I'm excited about today, about the, what the Lord's given me to share with us today. Um, and so I just want to, it's something that really ministered to me and has blessed me through the years. So I want to share that with you. And um, I'll just get started so I can get it all done. I don't want to get sidetracked. It's called the anointing in you. And he wants you to know that you have a part of him that nobody else has. And that he wants you to, he wants to, he wants to draw us closer in this area. And this comes from a book called The Divine Romance by Gene Edwards. And there's just a part that I want to read to you before we get into the scripture part of it. But this is the prologue <clears throat> in The Divine Romance. And it says, th this, this came to me because I asked the Lord one day, I ask him all kinds of stuff, don't I, Jackie? <laughs> I asked the Lord one day, I said, Lord, I know you love me. I mean, we all hear about the love of God and does it really register though? I, I know you love me, but I said, but you love everybody. So what does that mean to me? If you love me, you love everybody else, you love everybody, how does that make me feel special? I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't understand that. So you love everybody. Well, then I ran across this divine romance uh, page, and uh, so that's what I want to share with you, because this is the way he answered me. Uh, and this just starts off, it says, he was alone. The first tick of time had never sounded, nor had the unending circle of eternity yet commenced. There were neither things created nor things uncreated to share space with him. <clears throat> he dwelt in an age before the eternals where all there was, was God. Nor was there space for anything else. He was the uncreated. He was the all. In this non-time of so long ago, there was but one life form, the highest life. He was also love, passionate, emotional, expressive love. In this, in this God dwelling so all alone, there was a paradox. Though he was alone, he was also love. Yet there was no counterpart for him to love. A love so vast, so powerful, and yet there was no other than. Then life pulsated like bla like <clears throat> then life pulsated, light blazed in newfound glory as revelation ascended in him, as he cried from within the council of the Godhead, there can be two. <laughs> he had a revelation of himself. <laughs> I, the living God, shall have a counterpart. Exulting in revelation, he consecrated his whole being to this one task to have a bride, the body of Christ. He concentrated his whole being to this one task. If you want to know what God's thinking about, it's you. It's the body of Christ. It's us individually and corporately. In fact, that's how we pray for you every week. It's individually and corporately. So exulting in that revelation, <clears throat> he consecrated his whole being to this one task. That really spoke to me because that's what God's whole focus, all the stuff going on in the world and the bad stuff going on in the world, and God's focus is on the bride of Christ. It's on the bride. It's on the house of God. It's on you. For one brief moment, the infinite solitude retreated. But just before he launched his grand design, a very mysterious thing took place in God. Deep within the center of his being, now this is it, what spoke to me. Deep within the center of his being, there occurred an event that no other eye was to see, no other mind to conceive. A thousand million portions of God burst upward in light. Each of these portions of God ignited into flaming brilliance, as if to proclaim that each had been chosen, even marked off, for some special distant destiny. Say that with me. I have been chosen, even marked off, for some special distant, excuse me, destiny. It chokes me up to think about it. Just, I am special. You are special. And he was saying, 
Yes, I'm love, but I love you especially because of who you are. Amen. He says, having marked off these future destinies, the living God gave himself to making real his highest dream. Unending self-containment would end. So a thousand million portions of God burst upward in light. Each of these portions, that's an important word, a portion, a measure of faith, a portion of light. Each of these portions of God ignited into flaming brilliance as if to proclaim that each had been chosen, even marked off for some special distant destiny. So that's what he was saying to me, that even though I am love and I love everybody, my love for you is something separate and special. Each one of us are one of those thousand million portions that he marked off from before the foundation of the world. And, he, and when you came and received Christ, and if you haven't yet, we'll do that today, when you received your portion that he marked off back way back before time began, <clears throat> when you received, when you said, I receive you, Jesus, into my life, you got a portion of him Lord. that nobody else has. Hallelujah. That makes you a VIP special person. <clears throat> nobody, else, nobody else has your part. And you, you got a deposit of his anointing, his presence, his person, you were that portion, and you've been marked off in a destiny from before the foundation of the world. You can't beat that. That's like the heaven, Jack, Pastor Jack's dad knowing what all's going on in earth when he's in heaven. You are a, a very special person, and, and the, the anointing in you is particular to you. And there's no... You know, a lot of times we like to say the anointing's in the pulpit or the anointing's in these special preachers. The anointing is in anything that we will allow it to function in. Because we carry that anointing. It's like Joseph, when he went to prison, he took the blessing with him and he prospered in prison. The anointing's in you, so where you are is where it is and it furnishes everything that's needed, we'll see. <clears throat> so, oh, I'm just about to preach myself happy here, so... A thousand million portions of God burst upward in light, and each of these portions of God ignited into flaming brilliance. <laughs> if to as if to proclaim that each had been chosen, even marked off for some special distant destiny. So we will see um, eventually the scriptures that will that will back that up in Ephesians but so i wanted i wanted to read that to you because i believe today the lord wants us to experience him we're going to we're going to have a moment at the end to take a moment of reflection and meditation and experience him and i want you to experience him he wants to speak to you particularly special to, to understand how he operates in you. He wants you to recognize him when he's operating in you. Yes. And he wants us to take, because I, you know, the anointing is going to come in such intensity in the days ahead that we need to know it on purpose and not by accident. And he wants us to have quality time. I, I just see us just sitting in his presence and getting acquainted with him on an intimate level. He wants us to be intimate with his spirit in us, to know how he functions through us. And, and, to, and I believe he's going to speak to you as we're going to uh, uh, sit for a moment at the end. I believe he's going to speak to us individually just like he spoke to me about this when I said, you know, I know you love everybody, so what does that mean? Why is that so great for me that you love everybody? And he showed me this. No, you're a particular special part of who I am. And I, 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 can't, I, don't, I can't love anybody else like I love you because you're that particular part. 
And he says the same thing to each one of you. You're a particular part of who I am if you've received me as your Savior. And all you have to do is ask and I'll come. I'll be there. Because I always go back to the cross and see what Jesus did at the cross. I don't know if you ever saw the Passion, the play, but I don't know. The, the movie, but um, what he did at the cross, our Father God and Jesus Christ himself paid such an intense, tense price to get this to us. And John G. Lake uh, has said before, a uh, uh, powerful preacher of the past, that Jesus didn't come just to show us the way or to show us the Father. He didn't come just to take our sin up on his back and get on the cross. He didn't come just to, notice I'm saying just to, even rise up from the dead. He did all of that, yes, but he did it to get the anointing and the spirit back into mankind, the creation. And then we receive him as our savior and, and that light goes off inside of us, but then do we go on about our business and live our lives every day like we always have and he's saying that's got to stop and he wants us to spend some time with him and let him train us and, and educate us and quicken us if you will I remember Pastor Jack C said awake unto righteousness that's what he wants us to do and that anointing will quicken us inside. And the people out there are waiting for someone to come and set the captives free. But we have to have confidence in the Christ within us. Amen. And it's one thing to know it's there. It's something else to believe in it, when it that it's coming out of you. <laughs> it can come out of you, not just there. So in, in Isaiah, I'm going to read a few scriptures here. In Isaiah 10, 27, it says, It shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke shall be taken off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. The anointing breaks the yoke and lifts up the heavy burden. And the anointing's in you. It makes me think of a time when I took my dog to the groomer, and uh, this it wasn't Renzo, it was Zeke. I believe it was Zeke. No, it wasn't even Zeke. It was the other one before Zeke. But anyway, as I went into the groomer, the lady was hanging up the phone, and she started to cry, and the doctor had just called her and said to her that um, she was, uh, uh, that they'd found can cancer on the back of her tongue. And so she had just gotten that message, and I, I walk in the door with my dog. And, and I just thought, when she told me that, I'm not a real, I'm brave with you if we get into the subject and conversation, I will be very firm and direct. But I'm not going to go hit you upside the head to get your attention to be brave with you. I'm a little shy out, out in just public like that. So... Um, as I opened the door and she just hung up the phone and she told me what had happened, I went, oh my gosh, oh Lord, oh Lord, I've got to say something. I've got, I've got the goods. I know what to say. I know how to do this, but I'm just shy about doing it, you know? And so I just said, can I pray for you? I mean, that pushed me past my fears. And I said, can I pray for you? And she said, yes. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I curse cancer and I command it to go up with the blood over you in Jesus' name, amen. And the door opened and some guy came in. <laughs> I said, oh, thank you, Lord. I saw her like a month later. We were eating lunch at a, at a restaurant and she came by the table and said, do you remember the day you prayed for me? They found it all, they got it all. It's all cleared up, everything's fine. But I knew... As shy, as, 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 as insecure as I felt about doing it, I had the goods. Amen. You have the goods. Amen. The anointing's in you. If you have Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. We have the goods. We, and, it, and it says, uh, Jesus came saying, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. The spirit of the Lord, say that. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me. 
to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. That's all in there. <laughs> in the name of Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one, in me, the hope of glory. That's God's only hope to reach people. And you're it. So you, we just, when you know you've got the goods and that person's life could depend on it, it'll push you past your fears. You won't have, you won't have to worry. God will help you. And, and the thing is, the more you step out and do that, the more it's going to build strength in you. The more you sit in the anointing, the, the stronger you will get uh, in the anointing. I think one of the problems we have is trusting does that, that the anointing can come through me. Trusting the anointing. It's not that you don't trust in the anointing. It's do you trust in the anointing in you? You are that special person. You're the man of the hour in this particular thing. You're the one. You got the goods. And they're in you. One of the words for anointing means to furnish what is needed. The, anointed wants, the anointing wants to furnish what is needed. And the anointing is in us. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I got the goods. <laughs> Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is this not the fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens? You know anybody that's got wickedness and heavy burdens? And you can do this in your prayer room. You don't have to do this in their face, person to person. In fact, I wouldn't recommend it unless you really know what you're doing there. But you can do this in your prayer room. You can set at liberty the, those held captive by breaking the powers of darkness over them, by binding the, the, the devil from blinding their minds to the truth. Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. So whoever you're dealing with, their sins have already been died for. He died for the sins of the whole world. And so that, that, that person's sin has been atoned for. You take the blood that was shed, put, it, put that person with the blood over them at the foot of the cross and start praying for them and thanking God that by his stripes they were healed and blessing, put a blessing upon them. And, and the blessing, the first thing he's going to do is cause them to turn from their iniquities. then you can pray for God to lead them into the love of God and the steadfastness of Jesus Christ. Set the people free. A man, uh, what was it say in Proverbs 5, about a man um, is held in bondage by his own sin. They, they could come to church, be bond, bound up in their own sin. We're going to be set free today. Amen. Bound up in their own sin and not be able to respond to the gospel because somebody didn't set them free yet. So if you have relatives and people that aren't uh, being set free yet, that's your job in the prayer room. <laughs> I've told you about the story about, well, Mark Huber used to work here. We prayed on Thursday nights all the time, and he went to the nursing home every Thursday. And so that night he came by and he said, would you pray for a man named Roger? I'll go try to go to see him every time, but he will not even allow me in the room. Roger was in the nursing home. He was 96 years old and he was hard as a brick bat. He was, was not going to respond to Mark at all. And so we did, we started praying for Roger. And what, ha what I saw was Roger had a rope tied around his waist and he was all of the people in front of him were hanging off the edge of the cliff and that rope was around his waist and he was being pulled. I mean, at 96, he was closer to the edge than I am right now. He was being pulled, being pulled, being pulled. And so we just took the blood of the lamb in Jesus' name and severed that rope, put the blood over Roger and called him into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Every knee has to bow, you know, to the name of Jesus. Put, put the, severed that rope. Three weeks later, uh, uh, Mark came in and said, Roger got saved tonight, and he died six months after that. He just missed it. <laughs> but we've got the goods. We can do that. 
So is this not the fast that I've chosen? And then he says, uh, to loose the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. And then the next verse says, then shall your light break forth as the morning, and your health shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy rear, rear reward, and you shall call upon the Lord, and he shall answer thee. You can become partners with God in life. That's why people take drugs, is because they're missing this part. This, is a, this can become a drug. They said they're addicted to the word in the book of Acts. You can become addicted to this. You talk about an, a high. This puts you on a high to get out there and do spiritual warfare and set souls free and break, that, break the yokes, that bind, well, you know, bind. Find up the, uh, the brokenhearted and heal the brokenhearted and preach deliverance to the captives. That, that will set you on a high when you see your prayers being answered and you know that the creator of all the universes heard your prayer and answered it and that person got set free. Woo, doggy, that's fun. <laughs> that's like riding that bronc to the end I thought, all the eight seconds or minutes or whatever it is they ride a bronco, a bronco. a bucking bronco <laughs> so uh, in Acts chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 it's, Luke is saying that he's writing a letter and he says he wants to tell of all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, and I just want to point out here, he had, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. And that's what we're going to, at the end, we have a moment to sit for a moment, is that in the book of Acts, from the book of John to the book of Acts, there was a transition. These disciples talked to Jesus. They felt him, touched him, watched him, could see him. And then in the book of Acts, they had to hear him by the Holy Ghost. Everything changed. There was a transition. There could be a transition coming. That, well, there is a transition coming. I'm not sure how it will take, how it will manifest. But the things that, if you've been living out of the world systems, those things are breaking down. So we have to learn how to live out of the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of heaven would be a place, a higher place. The kingdom of God will be a government and a system and a, how you do business. For instance, in the kingdom of the earth, Satan's kingdom, you'd go to the bank to borrow money. In God's kingdom, you bring your tithe to the storehouse, you give offerings, you make a petition on prayer to the Lord and you agree as in touching and receive after your seed is sown. It's a whole nother system of doing business. And at first it may seem a little slow, but eventually you'll get the habit and you'll learn how that's just how you'll do business. And you'll plant your seed ahead of time for things that you don't even know are coming yet. So you'll, you'll give offerings. Uh, as far as healing goes, we always ran to the emergency rooms when, when I had to call 911 for Pastor Jack a couple of months, about a year ago, I guess, when you went to the hospital, you, the, the, they asked him, well, he, he got better before they even got there. And so when they got there, they didn't know whether, do you want us to take you to the hospital or not? And he said, if we do, they're just going to set you in a, in a alley. I mean, set you in a hallway and leave you there because they're so busy and they they don't have enough em, uh, EMTs are all quitting. I said, man, the church needs to know how to receive Jesus as our healer. I mean, we need to get gooder at it than we have been. We need to know that we know that we know that when we speak it, it's done, just like our Father is. We need to get practicing on this. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because... The world system is breaking up. It's falling apart, but the kingdom cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. So um, I just want to encourage us to get our focus about the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God and doing business that way. And he says that he, he counseled with his 
people through the Holy Ghost and, uh, and the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. That's the way the kingdom does business. Now, um, many infallible proofs. How many of you have many infallible proofs that Jesus Christ is alive and well on planet Earth? Amen. Amen. I encourage you to write a, a journal. Write your own book of what God has done in your life. I have a, I have a, a thing on my computer. I go in and update it every once in a while. But write your own book of where you ask for something and you got answers. And you ask for something and you got answers. That's the many infallible proofs that Jesus Christ is alive today. You know, they talk about this shroud of Turin. And, and th it may be this or it may be that. And we didn't, well, the guy that was talking about it said they didn't even believe Jesus raised from the dead. So I'll, there you go. Uh, but I have proof that he raised from the dead. <laughs> I've experienced his resurrection power, haven't you? So we don't have to worry about what somebody else thinks they discovered and found. And listen, we were discussing this in the prayer room too. With all of this AI stuff coming out, artificial intelligence, and people can create their own world and make you think it's real, we better know the anointing inside of us. The anointing, one of them, uh, one of the scriptures in, in 1 John uh, 5 says, 1 John 2, sorry, you have an unction or an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. You might not feel like you know all things, but you know all things. You know where the source is. You know how to call on it. You know how to pray. You know, you know. You're taught faith in, the, in this church. You know. <clears throat> now, sometimes it may get a little dim on us, and, and we might not feel like we know. I know one thing is important. Uh, if, if you are having to make a decision, you feel like you don't know. I don't know what to do. Don't, don't ever say that. Just take that out of your vocabulary. You, you, you might not feel like you know right now, but you'll know what to do. Amen. And the Lord's not going to let you do something stupid if you're not wanting to do something stupid. Now, you can push past him and do something stupid, but you don't have to. <laughs> and he won't let you if you don't want to. So don't worry about it. The devil's just trying to trip you up. You have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. And then it says on down in 27 and 28 of John 2, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie, and even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him. When he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Not be ashamed before him at his coming because we have confidence in the anointing of Christ within us. <coughs> you can't buy that at the store. In fact, the ten virgins said, go and buy oil for yourself. That's something that comes from me and you personally sitting before the Lord and allowing the Holy Spirit to saturate us with his knowledge and his knowing and teach us and tell us what to do. Amen. Then uh, recently, on my podcast, I've been talking about uh, the third commandment. I just, I'm just serving you some hors d'oeuvres here and there. <laughs> These are little ta table foods. The third commandment, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless. That takes his name in vain. I don't know what time it is. Okay. Not hold him guiltless. That takes his name in vain. And his name is anointed. So we can take the name of the Lord. I was given that as an assignment in a Bible class that I took, and uh, I was had to give a little talk on it. And I thought, what do you do with the name of the Lord in vain? You just don't cuss. That's all I knew about taking the name of the Lord in vain. But as I got into it, it was a lot bigger than I thought. And the names of God, I'll just do three, because these are the three that he first introduced to mankind, starting in... Uh, Genesis with Abraham uh, the Lord uh, uh, Jehovah Jireh the Lord will provide he will see to it the next is Jehovah Rapha the Lord is our healer 
He's our physician. And by the way, his word is the medicine that he will, he's, he, his word is the antibiotics that he will prescribe to you. And then the Lord our God is uh, Jehovah Nissi, the Lord is our banner of protection over us. That, there's a lot more, but I'm just going to stick with those three because those are the basic needs of life that we have. And we've got to get strong in those. If the hospitals aren't working and the medicines aren't working and some of the medicines are so strong they're destroying other organs in the body in order to take care of this, they're destroying this over here. And so we have, a, we have an alternative lifestyle. But we have, to, we have to seek it out. We have to investigate it. We have to apply it. I know when I first got saved, I, I wanted all these things to happen right away. And then I realized, you know, God's been around a lot longer than I have. And when he speaks, it happens right away. When I speak, it might not happen for a long time yet. But I have to keep saying it. I have to keep saying it. So we're not to take the name of the Lord in vain. That means with emptiness. In other words, if I'm going to declare to you that I am a Christian, I need to be allowing his name to manifest in my life, that he is my provider, my healer, and my protector. Right? So I have to get gooder at that than I am right now. Jesus walked the earth, and here was God himself in flesh, and the devil wanted to kill him like crazy because he... When you're a little acorn, he wants to take you out now. He doesn't want you to be an oak tree, and he has to cut you down. He wants to take you out while you're... Well, so when you get a, a revelation of the word, it's a little acorn, it will grow into an oak tree if you'll hold on to it. So just for an FYI, Jesus' name is Jehovah is Salvation. So we're not going to take the name of the Lord in vain. Jehovah is uh, Jehovah, meaning the self-existent one. Christ, Christos, is the anointed, the Messiah, to smear or rub with oil, to consecrate to an office or religious service, anoint. A primary verb of to furnish what is needed to touch upon lightly and to light upon. A lot of times that's kind of an intercessory prayer term where you... Uh, you know, I'm. Uh, you're walking down the street. You're walking, and you come over, and you over override somebody in your in your vision in your prayer time. See yourself just coming up and putting a prayer cloth over them, and and overriding them with the word of the Lord to help them. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I'm probably getting off in other things, but Christ is the Anointed One. Jesus, Jehovah, the self-existing one. Jesus, Jehovah is salvation. Christ, the anointed one. So the salvation comes through the anointing that breaks the yoke and lifts the heavy burden. <clears throat> just, just so you'll know, the word chosen is ek, ek, ek leos. And it, the ek means out from, a point of origin. So the lo, logos, ek logos, Logos is the word. So when it says chosen, it's not like he's going to say, oh, I'm going to pick you, not you, but you. No, no, chosen means you picked me. You picked the word. The word's not picking you. You picked the word. You picked the word, and it came out from, you came out from the word of the Lord, which makes you chosen. Well, just, you know, the, the whole Religious attitude has been built over thinking that God predestined people to some to be saved and some not to. That's just not right. God would never do that. That's not. It's not even in His nature to do to make you sick to teach you something, or to um, uh, choose certain people over other. I mean, that's almost racism. Of the word of the day there because he, he, he doesn't do that. He's not going to pick one person. In fact, I had somebody tell me that he created Judas for the purpose of uh, turning on Christ and, it, and so he couldn't go to hell because God made him do what he did. God doesn't make us do anything. Amen. Amen. Amen? He doesn't make us do anything. The thing that makes us like God, we're in his level of, of being, the thing that makes us like God is free choice. We can choose life in prosperity or death in adversity. 
That's what makes us like God. If, you, if anything takes away your choice, it's not God. He, he always wants you to have free choice. And the word sin, it literally means to miss the mark. To miss the mark or be without, to miss the mark and not share in the prize, to get as a section or allotment, a division or a portion, to not get as a portion. The only sin that would send somebody to hell is that they didn't pick up their portion of Christ. It's not any of those other things. It's not adultery. It's not any of the other things that we would call sin. That wasn't sin. I'm saying it would keep you out of heaven. Is to, is to not pick up your portion of the anointing. Because, let's turn to... Uh, well, you don't, do you have your Bibles? <laughs> okay, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 1, and then we'll get on to our... <laughs> this is where... This backs up what we started off with uh, on the apportion, the 100,000 million, 100 millions of portions of light... In Ephesians 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, I thought this was interesting, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. There's a difference between the saint, just the saints and the faithful in the anointing. With Christ means the anointing. When we read this and the word Christ, when you read through the New Testament and see the word Christ, think of the anointing. It's the anointing. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, his earth flesh name. Christ, his anointed spiritual name. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenlies or in heavenly places in the anointing. So where's the blessing? Where's the blessing? It's in that anointing, right? He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We're blessed in Christ. We're blessed in the anointing. We've got the goods in that anointing. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should, that, that word chosen is not the same word I just shared with you, uh, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us unto adoption. Now he did predestine us to adoption as children, but he didn't predestine who would be saved and who wouldn't. That's a free choice. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he has purposed in himself. Now this is the main scripture. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in the anointing, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will. God thinks about it. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were hovering over the surface of the deep in Genesis 1. He was, and then, then he spoke. So he thinks about it before he speaks. And he decides, and then he does. Decides, declares, and does it. So he wants us to draw aside and hear from him. He wants us to, uh, to that, that's the place uh, in the midst of all this darkness that you and I need to stay in Goshen, the land of light. And that's that anointing in you. And Jesus said, no man comes to me lest the Father draw him. Amen. So... Um, I asked the Lord one time while I was at somebody's house and the doorbell rang and she went to answer the door and I heard them talking and I said, Lord, that person walked in here 
and they and they had and they know you. I mean, would I know that? Would I know you if you were in them? Would I recognize you in that person? He said it wouldn't take you long. You'd know. All you gotta do is listen to someone talk. And in today's world, it's terrible. Think of the nasty words that you hear. So, the, that in the dispensation of the, this is the point I want to make here, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, that's Kairos moments, opportunities that come, he might gather together in one all things in the anointing. He's calling us home in the anointing. That's why we need to know our anointing. We need to follow after our anointing. We need to know it. We need to uh, be friends with it. We need to hold hands with it. We need to be comfortable in our anointing. And don't, like he said to me one time, don't ever apologize for my blessings. You don't have to apologize for my blessings. Just be glad and show the person how they can get to them. But don't apologize for them because you want to make some person feel better about their situation. You're, you're shutting God out to, to uplift this person. No, don't ever apologize for the blessings of the Lord. You're blessed, and he paid a high price for it, and you're going to enjoy it and uh, walk in it. Amen? So um, he's gathering together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Jesus went about... Uh, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. There's many scriptures to show you. And Jesus said to his disciples on the road to Emmaus, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in Jeru the city of Jerusalem that you may be endued with power from on high. That's how that anointing enlarges and, and increases in you is you tarry in the city in the word Amen. you tarry in the word you sit quietly before the Lord you think about that word I remember one lady was saying Lord how did you do that ask him Jesus you said 5,000 people off of two loaves and two fish how did you do that he wants to talk to us about things like that and, the, and then he'll give you answers to, to your questions how many of you know that I know you know that I'm just encouraging us in it. So we're going to, I have a uh, song that I want you to hear by um, Janae Chenier. And she used to sing this at the Benny Hinn meetings, I think. But um, it's called, It's the Anointing. And, and she does a great job of it. And, and what I felt like, th this is what I started me off on this. I was listening to the song. And I felt like the Holy Spirit wanted to do that here today. And he wants to speak to us. And he wants to, some of us don't even have a clue that we're even anointed. It's always that person over there or someone over there. Usually the people that are more bold and speak up more, you think they're anointed. Well, they may be, but that's not a sign that they're anointed. The quietest little per mouse in the corner could be having the, the anointing of the day. And I'll tell you, as leaders of a group, <clears throat> we're going to have to learn to recognize where the anointing is because the church is going to be a directing of that anointing. So we're going to have to be able to recognize it in someone else and tap that person and say, go ahead and speak up, sister or brother. And, and that's the Lord. Remember when Peter said they saw him on the, on the beach and they said, who is that guy? It was a fire and he was roasting something. They said, Peter finally jumped in the water and said, it's the Lord. We're going to be able to say, it's the Lord. You're going to first recognize it in you and then recognize it in others and learn how to direct it, encourage it in your kids if you're raising your children to let them know. So this is called, it's the anointing with Janae Chenier. It's about six minutes long, but I believe the Holy Spirit's going to do his ministry I want you to ask him to correct or confirm or to show you where your anointing is. He created you from before. Let's see. Uh, just real quick, let me. From before the foundation of the world. Uh, 
Just a minute. I got it. I got it. Ephesians 1. According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. From before the foundation of the world, when there was nothing there but quietness, and he knew there could be another, and he picked you, and he set a destiny for you. I want him, he's going to talk to you about that. He wants to talk to you about that. So I'm asking you to step into this place with me and with the Holy Ghost today. It's just a few minutes, but it's a time to, to listen to his voice. Shut out everything else. Close your eyes and shut out everything else and allow your bestest friend, the Holy Ghost, to speak to you about these issues and the anointing in you and how it wants to function and work. Amen? Amen. Just a minute. Let me pray over the people. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, we know what you're doing. <laughs> you told me what you wanted to do. And so we just praise you and thank you for that. <clears throat> And Lord, give us ears to hear and eyes to see. And we seek you out now in Jesus' name. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring the tidings to The broken hearted proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that abound. It's the
Thank you, Lord. The anointing operates by faith, and it will replenish what is needed. When, when God created the human being, the first words he spoke to him were, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Then we lost our anointing in the garden with the, with the fall, and Jesus came and brought it back, and we received him back into our lives. And the anointing furnishes what is needed, but it's in us. So we have to educate our minds, to, to renewing our minds, and then we have to practice it. I mean, practice makes perfect. You don't always get it right the first time. You might make some mistakes. That's okay. He doesn't mind you putting on his shoes, even if they're too big for you. He likes to see you that you believed the message. Amen? Just like you would your little toddler. They imitate what they see. Well, we're little toddlers in his, in his eyes, and we, uh, he, he likes to see us practicing what we see him doing. The anointing will furnish what is needed. It is the very presence of God, but it must be respected. And the world system and the world, the noises of the world will crowd it out and it will just step into the back, into the shadows and, and not be there. And, but it has to be honored, has to be respected. For instance, uh, when, as the anointing settles in the days ahead and the church services and the body of Christ coming together, you, you be careful about what time you get up and go to the bathroom. Because the Holy Spirit may be ministering to someone and your movement just interrupted the canopy that he had put over that person to set them free. So we have to be very respectful of the things of God and the anointing. And um, I'll just leave it with that. Amen. I'm trying to decide which way to go. Do you have any? We're, we're closing down, but... I, I, I talked about Pastor Jack and I laying hands on whoever would want us to lay hands on them to, you know how in the movies you see them, they, they do the heart thing, charge, stand back, charge. I felt like the Holy Ghost was to charge some of you if you feel like you need a recharge in your anointing or you've never even received Christ as your Savior, then the anointing's not in there yet. And so uh, we need to be recharged. Amen. As Mary Jean was sharing that, in the book of Mark, there is a story of a woman that needed something from God. It was an impossibility. But she had to go to God to get it. And she had an issue of blood. She had a condition. Her answer was in Jesus. But she had to get to him. 
And it said she went through the crowd and she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment, that's what the Lord is selling us today. If you'll just reach out and touch the hem of his garment, then that portion that he has for you, you'll receive it. Because the crowd was marching. There was a throng of people around him, and she made her way through this. She had to be weak as could be. She had to be undesirable, not worthy. But she made her way through the crowd, and it says she touched the hem of his garment. When you touch the hem of his garment for that anointing this morning, and it said that Jesus stopped and he said this, someone has made a demand upon my ability. And he stopped. And it says she was made whole immediately. That's what Pastor Mary Jean is talking about this morning. You have to be like that lady with the issue of blood. You want to touch the hem of his garment and to receive that anointing on your life today. But you have to come to Jesus. You have to make a stand. You have to stand up. You have to walk down here and touch the hem of his garment. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to anoint you with oil. Are you understand what I'm saying this morning? What, Mar what Mary Jean is preaching? There's a portion of God that has your name on it. And it's only yours. But you have to ask for it. So are you inviting them to the front? Or what are we doing? I was going to let you do it. But oh. Let's all stand to our feet. If that's you this morning, may, may if say? that's you this morning, what Mary Jean and I want to do is we just want to anoint you with oil. We're not... That's all it's going to take is for your effort, for you to say, God, I want that portion that has my name on it. And all we're going to do is we're going to anoint you. You might find when you're working with the Holy Ghost, sometimes you get to a place and you don't know what to do. And that's okay. If you wait, he'll show us what to do. My goodness gracious. Receiving the anointing is no different than salvation. You had to ask for it. It's no different than being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Bible said, he that would ask for it would receive it. That's all we're going to do this morning is you are asking for that portion of God that he wants to anoint your body with.